but we allow so much to come in. That's so good, right? To yeah. us. Yeah. And, and Christians get this, and then they say, oh, well, you know, I've, I've got this from this and this problem, and I've got this condition, and it's going to be with me the rest of my life, and I'm just learning to live with it. I think, well, who told you to do that? Yeah. And I'm not negating doctors. I mean, they're very important. They saved my life. And we have many friends in the church with doctors and medical people. Well, your own wife is one. But we have to be realistic. Yeah. And don't take this junk. Yeah. It'll kill us. And it will stop us fulfilling our destiny. Yeah. Okay, welcome back to session six. This is going to be our final on the third part of the circle of life, which is confession. And we're going to be talking about the power of agreement and disagreement as well. So Roger... Perhaps we could just establish what we mean when we say agreement. Yes. Let's look at the scripture in Matthew 18, where Jesus said something I think we can misunderstand. He says, I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything you ask for, it'll be done for you by my Father in heaven. Mm. For where two or three come together in my name, there I am with them. Mm. Very powerful. Um, so Jesus is telling us, um, how we put this law of establishment that we spoke about yep. into, into action in our relationship together. Right. So he said, it's, it's not just you speaking to yourself or speaking to your mountain or speaking to God because we're a body and we're a community. Yeah. It's how you speak to each other that yeah. you, will you will confess truth to each other. And he says, there are times that if two or three of you agree on earth concerning something, the law of establishment, it'll be done for you. Now, that doesn't mean to say, um, like you say to me, oh, I really fancy a Ferrari. <laughs> um, can, I get, can I get a couple of people to agree with me? <laughs> and I say, yeah, Dave, I think you should have a Ferrari. I'll agree with you for that. No, it's not, it's not that at all. Yeah. It's, again, it's coming to hearing, what is God saying about a situation? Yes, yes. And it's saying, oh, I, I believe that, Lord. What do I do? And the Lord says, get David and get uh, Kia, get these people to agree with you about this. Yeah. Or, I really believe the Lord has said this to me about this. This is going to happen. Yeah. Um, but to, in, to see it come into reality, I, I, need an, I need a witness to agree with me. Yeah. But it also means, um, it's just before we get there, in a general lifestyle. Yeah. Um, what I'm finding is that if I hear somebody say something that's true, yeah. and not necessarily quoting a scripture, but if they say something that's true, I will say, that's right. Yeah. I'm agreeing with you. Yeah. Um, why? Not just to make you feel good, but the law of establishment works. Yes. Because if you say to me, Do you know, God is good. He is. And I say, yeah, he is. I know that. <laughs> I do believe that. Yeah. But when I say, I hear God say it through you to me, because yeah. that's what's happening. I, uh, when I say, you know, that's right. Yeah. Something happens to me. Yeah. Something of that truth is established stronger in me. Well, do you know the Lord is faithful? Mm. Or the Lord will be with you today. Or... Um, you know, do you know something? You really are loved by God. Yeah. Um, I, I find that, again, people say, well, you're just making us feel good. Well, yes, we are. <laughs> but it's building you up in your faith. Yes. And sometimes we do it. In fact, let's, let's try it. Um, if you, you say to me um, truth, speak about anything, just, just say, and, I, and I'll respond. Okay. Uh, God is faithful. That's right. He is. Yeah. He is. Keep going. Hit me with another one. <laughs> God is my provider. Wow. Yes. He, yes, he is. And he's mine too. Yeah. Yeah. God is my healer. Yes, he is. And he healed me too. He did. God is kind. Yes. I, oh, isn't he wonderful? He's, he's kind. He's just. He is. He's true. He's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. That feels good, Roger. Yeah. Did you, good. There's a dynamic. There's a dynamic there. And it's not just, oh, you just. No. no, we're speaking truth. Yeah. Everything you said is true. Yeah. 
That's what God says of himself, what he says of us. Yeah. So you are actually in reality, Dave, even though it's your voice, you're saying, you're, God is speaking to me through you. Yeah. Okay, he's the witness and you're the, and I'm that witness and I'm saying yes. Amen. Now let's try it again. Okay. And you, you come at me again. And this time, let's see what happens. Okay. God's faithful. I, I don't want to say anymore, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> God's true. He's just and he's kind. I can't, I can't go any further, Roger. I'll put you out of your misery. <laughs> it's, it's certainly different. I'm, I'm, I'm having to try and pull something yes. out of myself because there's, yes. there's nothing back. But you are convinced by what you said. Yeah, I believe what I say. And I believe what you said. Yeah. But m- m- even though I heard you, I heard God and I believed it, yeah. the fact that I kept silent, and that, this is where silence is not golden, yeah. My silence almost killed it. Yeah. And I can't remember anything you said. Huh. But it affected you, didn't it? It did, yeah. It didn't make you doubt it, but you thought, this, I can't yeah. give him something here. And I couldn't receive. And, I, and because I couldn't get anything, I wasn't receiving and speaking, I wasn't giving anything back to you. Mm. And so you see this whole thing of just generally of agreement. Yeah. If two of you agree on earth, so that's what we're doing in one aspect yeah. of saying, that's right. And that's what the word amen means. Yeah. Amen doesn't mean, please finish the sermon. <laughs> Although it has meant that. <laughs> Although it has been said in that way, to me. <laughs> amen means, yes, yes, I agree. Yeah. And so whenever you see Jesus say in the scriptures, I tell you the truth, or verily, verily, in the old versions, the word is actually amen. He's yeah. saying amen, amen. Yeah. And he says it before he says it. He says, agree with this. I agree with what I'm saying and you need to agree with this. Amen, amen. So your amen is this. I agree. Yeah. So even if you want to say amen, but you can say, that's right. Good call. Yeah. Whatever, whatever you say. But you're saying something. You're, you're saying, I agree. And we can do this with stories. We use the word testimony, the scriptures does, but we can do this with our stories, can't we? Yes, yes. The scripture calls it testimony, but we call it story. Yeah. And our stories um, have a power. So maybe the story we told about the lady in our last session who yeah. spoke to her mountain, that was a story that somebody who will watch this in the future will say, wow, that's a story yeah. that can be true for me. Yes. And... Uh, that's why what we all have is a story yeah. of how we met Jesus or what Jesus has done for us. Um, and we can use stories um, to really encourage each other and say, this is what the Lord did for me. Yeah. This is what the Lord has done for me. Um, and that comes in then to how we can agree with each other over yeah. certain things. Like our friend Johnny. Well, yeah. we. D- I mean, you talked and started by talking about a, we can do this in specific moments where we yes. where we make an agreement on something God said mm. and uh, the first time that I'd, I'd engaged with this and seen this work um, some of us as students used to get together early mornings to pray and my friend Johnny was studying to be an actor and so talking about voices I mean he'd have voice upon voice upon voice saying oh it's oh, an yeah. unstable industry it's it's, it's full of bad stuff, wickedness. You don't want to go there. You know, you're never going to end up having a stable job. So he's got all these voices, but all, you know, since he'd heard God, God had said to him, I want you in this industry. He just was like, I've got to pursue it. So uh, he had an opportunity to get a job. Um, and my friend said to him, do you believe that God's from, job, do you, uh, from God? Do you really believe that's what he's got for you? And Johnny went, yeah, I, I believe that. So he said, right, we're going to agree now that right. this is yours. So we agreed. We said, Lord, we believe this is Johnny's. And that week he got the job. And, and, and now years on, I mean, it's a bit of a joke that he's the one who's never out of work. <laughs> <laughs> and friends have fallen away and, and others have done well, but he's always had yes. uh, everything he's needed and more. And you just think God's been really faithful, but we made an agreement. Yes, We took what we'd heard and believed and we established it together. Yes, and that's because it's a fantastic story and, and we know Johnny and it, it, he is very successful. And it, it comes back to this agreement because God is God of covenant. Yeah. And covenant is simply this, an agreement. Yes, yeah. 
and uh, we're in the new covenant with a new agreement. And this is why we can put these things into practice. As we said, not about silly little things, mm. but it's a, it can be about a job. Yeah. Uh, where Diane, my wife, she, she, uh, she does this quite a lot with people. That she's, uh, oftentimes she's talking with folks and mm. she would just say, they say, I'm going for a job interview. And she'll say, um, do, you re- do you believe that God is giving you this job? And sometimes they say, well, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm just going to, for an interview. I'd like it. And she'll say, I'll pray. But there are times like with Johnny, and I said, she said, the lady would say, I really believe God has given me this job. Yeah. And Diane would just take her hand and say, then I'm agreeing with you. Let's agree together. We agree that God has given you this job. Yeah. We agree. And it happened. Yeah. She's seen it happen with um, uh, people who are wanting children. That's amazing. Several times. Yeah. I remember the first time it happened. <laughs> it's funny because the first time it happened, it was in Norway. And the lady ended up having twins. So I said to her, you need to be a bit more specific. <laughs> a double portion. <laughs> a double portion. But, uh, and those are the, bit, the things that people are saying, I, I just, I need this witness. Yeah. And when I've got it, um, you, you know. Yeah. I remember a lady who's gone to be with the Lord now, some years ago, a good friend of ours in the church. She had cancer. And um, I remember her because she was, she came to me uh, in a meeting and, and then she was worshiping the Lord and praising. And then she said, uh, you know, the dead, I said, the, do- the dead don't praise the Lord. And she said, that's right. And she came up to me after, she said, I'm going to live. And I said, I believe so. And she said, because you told me I will. I said, what did I? She said, the dead don't praise the Lord and I'm not going to die. Wow. I said, okay. So uh, I went to the Lord and the Lord said, that's right. Your word is keeping her alive. So I said, what do I do? He said, well, one day your word will heal her. So uh, wow. we, I talked to her and I said, and she was a fantastic friend, lovely lady. Yeah. And she said, uh, okay, yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. And it was about three months later, we were in a prayer meeting. And I can't remember what actually happened, but the Lord was moving. And all of a sudden, somebody prophesied, said something. We looked at each other and we said, this is the moment yeah. when we agreed. And I stood there in front of her. And it was, it, I never touched her. I just said, we're agreeing right now. You're going to be healed in the name of Jesus. Wow. And I went, now. And the moment I went, now, she actually took off. <laughs> she, honestly, I mean, wow. when you get the Holy Spirit, things amazing. She just took off and just flew about 10 feet and lay on her back. And I thought, Lord, you did that. You, may, you must have killed her. I don't know. But when she got up, she said, I felt this burning where the cancer was. And wow. She went for the test and it disappeared. But it was this agreement yeah. that we had yeah. in that moment. That's incredible. Yeah. So th- I, we, we keep saying this, but this is destiny shaping stuff. So yeah, if that's yeah. the power of agreement, mm. we've got to look then at the power of oh. disagreement as well. Yeah. If agreeing with you builds my faith, mm. um, and that silence that I, I did, yeah. that's a disagreement. <laughs> yeah. But there's also a disagreement of a refusal to believe. Right. And we have to distinguish this. When Jesus was he- healing that, that boy with the demon that the disciples couldn't heal, and the father said, I, I do believe, help me because I my unbelief. Yeah. He's not saying, I refuse to believe you. He's saying, I've got my doubts, I've got my struggles. Yeah. Please help me. Yeah, I want to I believe. I want to believe. Yeah. And Jesus says, I'll help you. Yeah. And I like that because he does the same for us. Yeah. Thinking, Lord, I'm trying to get there. He says, come on, keep doing these things. Yeah. I'm helping you. But the, there's another unbelief, which is a refusal to believe. Mm. The New Testament calls the hard heart, yeah. the Pharisees, the Israelites. Yeah. And he said they didn't enter because they actually refused to believe God. That's he the said, promised land. The they promised didn't. land. You won't go in. Yeah. Because God has said. And in Numbers 13 and 14, which is a long story, we see that story. And in Numbers 13, um, the, they're coming to the edge of the promised land. Mm. And uh, we find that Jesus had said to them, uh, God had said to them, rather, I'm giving you the land. Yeah. Now go in and check. Check what it's like. Twelve spies went in. We know the story. So the issue was not a stake. The land was theirs. Yeah. Because God had spoken. Yeah. They heard God. 
all right? Yeah. They came back and they said, it's true, it's fantastic land, but we're not going to take it because there are giants there. We can't do it. We can't take it. Mm. And they spread a bad report among the people. And God's, but there were two men, Joshua and yeah. Caleb, and Caleb's the first to stand up and says, no, yeah. <laughs> you're wrong. We disagree with you. And Joshua says, that's right. I agree. We disagree with you. God has told us the land is ours. Yeah. We're going to go in and take it. But the 10 men had stirred up the, all the people. And all the people said, let's kill them. We're not going in. And then God intervenes and says, okay, if you're refusing to believe me, you won't go in. Yeah except for the two who disagreed with you. Yeah. And this is what is all, it's, it's, this is awesome because if Joshua and Caleb had said nothing. Yeah. They'd stayed silent. If they'd stayed silent, mm. they wouldn't have gone in. Because they wouldn't have given their agreement with God by giving their disagreement with that lie. Yeah. See, that's what they, you silence when God has said something, your silence says you're agreeing with that. Yeah. But not that they said, no, we believe God. Yeah. And there are times in our lives when we have to, because our, our, our destiny, our future depends on it. Yeah. What I, what I, dis, what I agree with. Yeah. So if someone says to me, do you know, Roger, you're in your late 60s now. Your, your health will decline. Your best years are behind you. Um, you know, you, you, you have issues with your heart. Uh, I think you need to take it easy right now. Just, mm. I, I could do that. I could say, yeah. Or I could say, mm. or I can say, and people have said that to me. I am saying, no. Yeah. No, I'm not doing that. I'm not, I'm not, I know I'm not 21, but no, I'm not doing that. Why? Because God told me. Yeah, that's it. <clears throat> I would do everything I ever did before. Mm. I had a heart attack and I will live a full long life. Yeah. So my life's not over yet. Yeah. I am going to live according to the way the Lord tells me. Now I know, I know I'm, not, I'm not doing 100 meters in 10 seconds. I never did anyway. <laughs> Being honest and realistic. But I think, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not having that. Yeah. Or someone will say to us, do you know um, All Nations Church, its best days are behind it. No. Yeah. No. Or do you know something? You're not really that important to God. Am I, aren't That's I? That's a big one. Aren't I? Mm -hmm. And uh, but we 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 take these things in. Yeah. You know. Or uh, you know, in the world, you know, the world's just going to get worse and worse and worse and worse, and our future is gloom and doom and everything. Now the world is getting worse and worse, but our future is not. Our future is bright. Exactly. We're in the kingdom. Yeah. And we're the answer for this world. We're That's not the it. world's problem. Amen. But in a practical way, if I'm, I'm not being disagreeable. No. <laughs> I'll say, don't say anything. <laughs> but if someone comes to me or a, a voice speaks to me and says something that's really bad or gossipy. Yeah. Do you know something about, you know, Dave? God, Dave. God, he gets in no, I'm sorry. Dave is my brother. I'm not having that. I yeah. disagree with you. Yeah. Dave's a fine man. Yeah. But we allow so much to come in. That's so good, right? To us. Yeah. And, and Christians get this, and then they say, oh, well, you know, I've, I've got this from this and this problem, and I've got this condition, and it's going to be with me the rest of my life, and I'm just learning to live with it. I think, well, who told you to do that? Yeah. And I'm not negating doctors. I mean, they're very important. They saved my life. And we have many friends in the church with doctors and medical people. Well, your own wife is one. But we have to be realistic. Yeah. And don't take this junk. Yeah. It'll kill us. And it will stop us fulfilling our destiny. Yeah. The power, I will finish with this, the yes. power of life and death. Power of life and death are in the is tongue. Is in the tongue. It's in our words. Mm. We're going to finish drawing that, that part of the circle there. Um, but remember that the power of life and death is in your words. So let's be listening. Let's be listening to what God is saying in our circumstances, in our everyday and, and in our mountains. 
And let's be, let's be those who believe it and let's be those who speak it and agree it together and disagree with the voices that would say anything contrary. Amen. Putting it into practice already. We'll see you in the next session.